So for the last 23 years, and Putin has been in power for 23 years, he has been building a monopoly on power, a monopoly on political action, and a monopoly on violence. And it's been, it's, it's, it's only grown, this, the, the, the degree of this monopoly, if you can use monopoly in that way. Uh, and this is the first time that, uh, that his monopoly on political action and his monopoly on violence has been challenged. What I was writing about a couple of weeks ago was that Prigozhin, Yevgeny Prigozhin, who led the mutiny uh, this weekend, was having a very public spat with the Minister of Defense, Sergei Shoigu, who is, in fact, the person he ultimately was targeting in his, in, in his insurrection. <clears throat> and that kind of uh, spat was the first time in many, many years that people in Russia who have actual power, right, not, you know, opposition activists who have things to say but have no power, but people with actual power were having a public disagreement. That's really what a lot of politics is about, but Russia hadn't seen that kind of politics in decades. When you talk about this, when you talk about someone like Shoyu, is it surprising to you that we have not seen them in the past 48 hours? That we haven't seen Putin in the uh, and Shoyu in the that we haven't past seen Shoyu. 40 years? Yeah. Well, um, it's interesting, right? Mm. Uh, Putin, you know, we know how careful Putin is. The reason that Putin has had the stability that he's had is that he is truly paranoid, paranoid in a way that that's very safe safe for a dictator right that's that's what keeps him secure he generally sees a greater threat than he is in fact facing so it's not at all surprising that we haven't seen him he gave up an address he uh, he called on Prigozhin to, uh, for Prigozhin's arrest he called Prigozhin a traitor and then he disappeared from the radar literally his plane took off from Moscow and disappeared from the radar so he is somewhere in hiding in one of the many, many underground bunkers that he has around the country. Now, the reason we haven't seen Shoigu, the Minister of Defense, is probably more interesting um, because Prigozhin was demanding that Putin remove Shoigu. It is probably uh, what has been promised in the sort of peace agreement that was brokered, right? I mean, it's it's hard to talk about what happened this past mm. weekend because I think it went through several iterations. There was the first iteration, which was a mutiny. Then it briefly looked like a coup. And then it actually looked like an act of terrorism that had succeeded. The, the negotiations gave uh, the terrorist in chief uh, a safe getaway. He went to Belarus. And he was promised something in exchange. And what he was probably promised was the removal of Shoigu. Now, on the one hand, it weakens Putin to have given in to, um, to Prigozhin and to, in fact, remove Shoigu. On the other hand, the fact that the Russian army could tolerate that kind of uprising could, you know, what we are looking at now and on the screen is the way people were greeting people, uh, the uh, Prigozhin's troops in Rostov the seat of the southern military district of Russia, right? That does not show Shoigu to be a trusted and, uh, and, and, and viable minister of defense. So Putin is really stuck. So it's no wonder that, that, that um, we haven't seen Shoigu because we don't know what's going to happen to Shoigu. Yeah, do you perceive Prigozhin to be safe? I don't know. Right. Um, uh, we can, uh, and I think this is another impossible situation for Putin. On the one hand, it is absurd to allow someone like Prigozhin to to continue to live, um, you know, in Russia, in Belarus, even more in Belarus, in fact, than in Russia, because then in Belarus there is the risk of him forming an alliance with the notoriously sort of fickle president of Belarus, Alexander Lukashenko, or elsewhere. On the other hand, Putin needs Prigozhin. Putin needs Prigozhin in Ukraine, and he needs him for his own protection. He also needs him to keep uh, Prigozhin's own troops in line. Right? Putin can't imagine what would happen if Prigozhin were arrested or disappeared. 
what would happen to the tens of thousands of men who are actively serving in Prigozhin's private army and hundreds of thousands who have served in Prigozhin's private army in the past. So this is really, you know, uh, Putin would, might be better off if he could get rid of Prigozhin, but getting rid of Prigozhin might be too risky a proposition.